Hey guys, it's Nick here, and I have another unboxing to do. Ugh. I don't have, I don't know where my box cutter is, so I have to use this thing, a guitar pick. I was not expecting to get it this fast. Um, ugh. Uh, well, I don't think this is going to work. I don't know if this is going to work. Um, I can't open it this way, I guess. Gosh, I know. I should have grabbed a knife from the kitchen or something. Alright, there we go. Alright, uh. I guess this will just have to do. Yeah, I just woke up, so that's why. I may not sound very energetic. Uh, is that my packages arrived? It's like, oh yeah, I'm awake, I'm awake. But it's just, I'm also not awake. It's hard to explain. Oh. Come on, I just need to get this one part. There we go. Oh, man. Okay. Kind of ruined the box a bit, but that's okay. Alright. Got uh, the stuff. Alright, and this time there are some games. Obscure ones, but there are some games. Um, okay. Yeah, here we go. The first couple are games. Okay. So, these are a couple Game Boy Color games, actually. Nothing exciting, but these are games that we never got in the U.S., which is surprising. I think they were actually intending to, and I'll, I'll explain it, um, of course. Wow, I cannot open this. There. Okay. So the first one is Backgammon. Oh, that's really exciting, isn't it? It's by Ultron. This is a company that, it, it, it was kind of weird, like during the Game Boy Advance era, they made a bunch of like Western licensed games or whatever, and then they'd uh, release them in the U.S. And then they also did it for, uh, they did, they did some Game Boy games like that, but, uh, like, they made, like, Danny Phantom and stuff for, like, the Game Boy Advance. And they made a Dexter's Laboratory game for the Game Boy Color, I just learned. And that it's actually a reskin of a elevator action game. So, that's kind of funny, actually. I never thought I'd see Dexter's Laboratory and uh, elevator action together, but that's pretty funny. So, uh... Alright, so, but anyways, I, I said earlier, I think they actually meant to release these games in the U.S. because, uh, I don't know about Backgammon, I haven't really played that one, but there's uh, this other one I'm about to show you. There's actually a mode to play the game in Japanese or English, and it's just like, it's like, huh, so I wonder if that was the, if that was their plan, you know, to release it in the States. Who knows? Um, now, Ultron, I think the first game I bought by them was uh, Paperboy for the Famicom. You know, I thought the, I thought the Famicom version of Paperboy wasn't that bad. It's just really bad compared to the arcade game. I remember ABGN saying, man, I can never beat this game. Like, everyone else seems to have no problem with it. It's like, it does take some practice, but once... To get used to it, it's yeah, it is a pretty easy game to beat, though. Um, I, mean, I guess it's like anything, but it's definitely not like one of the hardest games ever made or anything. So, uh, so, anyways, the second one is called Checkmate. So, yeah, this is a as you could probably tell, it's chess, which is which is interesting because it's not a shogi game, and shogi games are usually the more popular ones um 
Ugh. I always get paranoid. I don't want to break the box or anything. So, uh, there's the manual, anyway. Pretty cool. Wow, this manual's like a lot thicker. Oh, wow! So this, this is in English. Looks like, they, so yeah, they have it both in Japanese and, uh, I don't, like, it's upside down, I know, but, like, they have it in Japanese, and then they have it in English. That's very interesting. Um, so, yeah, I wonder if that was the... I mean, I don't... Why else would they have it in, in English? That's kind of weird. Um, but that's that's pretty cool. I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it is interesting to see a Shogi game for the Game Boy in Japan, because we're at a chess game for the Game Boy in Japan. It's usually it'd be a Shogi game instead, but... Uh, I could not get this. Uh, can I open this. Come on. Come on. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, this looks like another game, is it? Oh yeah, it is. And uh, speaking of Shogi, it's funny I, I bring it up. Because <laughs> that's what this game is. Um, yeah, I've been playing Shogi games recently. I was on a Mishan craze. Now I'm playing Shogi even though I suck at it. Um, this is uh, Mina no Shogi Shokyuhen. Which I think means that everyone's Shogi beginner's version. Um, I don't remember how to say it's... I think it's Kunio Yonanaga, probably. But uh, he's, like, the director of this game, apparently. So, uh, the game, I did play through the game. I cheated, of course, and I used an AI to to beat the computer. But uh, you get, like, this password when you beat the game. And I don't know what it's for, but it says something about checking the manual. So, fine, I'll check the manual. I don't know, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um... There's a little biography about the guy. Uh, that's kind of cool, I guess. I think that's it. I think that's all there is to say about that. There's really nothing else. Alright, well. Time to... Alright. Yeah, I probably won't, this will probably be the last one I'm due for a while because I'm actually saving up for my uh, vacation. And uh, so I'm probably not going to be able to afford as many things. But who knows. Uh, maybe I'll work some overtime at work and then I'll, I'll be okay. Who knows. Uh, ah, okay, this one is video game related. So, uh... Yeah, this was the only copy of it that I could find, too. Um, now, the, the seller had it listed as a little damaged dirty, but like I said, it was the only one I could find, so I decided to take a chance. But this is Takeda Shingen, and this is the official soundtrack CD. So, uh, we, we got it in the U.S. as Shingen the Ruler. And I'm not usually good at games like that, but uh, let's see. How's the CD? Uh, looks okay. I don't see like any scratches or anything. It might be a little dirty or something. Um, yeah. So not only apparently Meta Mono Meta Monoys was the performance, and they actually uh, credit um, Cube on the back here, which is a music group led by composers such as like uh, Noriyuki Iwadare and uh, Isao Mizoguchi. But uh, the game's soundtrack was actually composed. I wonder. I don't see his name on the on the CD or the back or anything. But the music in this game was actually written by Kazu Nakayamane, which is or Kazu Yoshi Yamane, as he's also known. Um, and he's uh, oh, that's cool. They got like little. They got like lead sheets and stuff in here. That's pretty cool. Um, I'll have to scan this. But um, yeah, the same guy that composed Double Dragon did the music for this game. And the, the game, the music in the game itself is okay. It's nothing like, it's not like the best thing you'll ever hear in your life or anything. But it's, yeah, they took really good care of this. This is pretty cool. 
Um, just a few screenshots of the game, but like, uh, let me see if I can show you one of the sh lead sheets here. It's in black and yellow, which is kind of interesting, but there you go. Pretty cool. <laughs> I love it. All right. I'll, I'll give that a listen, though. I don't think there's a rip online, so maybe I'll upload that later. Who knows? All right. Uh, so I got a few more to go. 1032. Yeah, this this video, I got to not mention that one thing. And I'll be fine. And I don't really have a reason to mention that one thing that I can't talk about. Ah, yes. Ah, it's rare to get Switch games. A Shogi game for the Switch. And that's what I'm trying to sell a couple of my Switch games for. I actually have a uh, sealed copy of Animal Crossing and uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, I think, for the Switch. Just when I got my replacement one, they came with them. And I'm just trying to sell them because I don't need them. I'm never going to play them. This is, uh, I think it's Kishi... Um, Fuji Soji, I think, or Sota Fuji. Kita Soji Fuji no Shogi Training. Um, that's the name. So, uh, Kishi, not to be confused with the Japanese word for knight, like a, uh, like a knight in chess or whatever. Uh, it, it's like a, it just refers to like a Shogi player. And, uh, Look who made this game, though. Uh, game Studio. You may not be familiar with them. Um, yeah, damn camera's not focusing on it. But uh, Game Studio was founded by Masanobu Endo of Namco. So, yeah, technically you could say this game is by Bandai Namco Games. Uh, they did a lot of work on the Famicom, actually. They did a Family Circuit. I think I, I did a video on that game. Uh, they did that mobile... Z Hot Scramble game, which apparently has music by Neil Sadaka, but that could be an alias. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But here's the thing I hate about Switch games. You might be like, well, what's the problem? Well, look what happens. Well, I mean, it's, I, have, I have it here for reference, but when you get a uh, Game Boy Color game, for instance, you get a manual and stuff, you know, and with the Switch game, all you get is just the game on, a, on, on like, a little card, you know, it's, it's really sad, actually, but I'm hoping I enjoy this one. Um, I might use an AI to, to cheat, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> I, I know, I'm a piece of work. Oh, is this the book that I got? Ooh, I hope it is. Oh, man, I tell you, when you're in a rut or depression and your package arrives, it's like, it goes away. Oh, yes. I, this is why I like buy. You get sometimes you can find stuff at a good price. and But, you know, when on eBay, everything's like freaking twice as expensive. This is one of those things. Let me open it here. If I can get it. Gotta be careful, I don't wanna break it or anything. Okay. Woo. Yeah, I'm trying to be talkative. Did I. I don't know if I told people that I'm an introvert, you know? Like, people probably don't know that. Like, I don't like small talk. Watch, if you wanna learn more, I'd say watch Matt Walsh's video about it who is also an introvert. Anyways, this is Dire Straits, the scorebook. Uh, let's say you transcribe this. Um, it does. Okuzawa Aki, Akio, I think, and Shiro Sato. Interesting. Um, but it's got, like, all the parts, you know. The only crappy thing is there's only a few songs. There's Sultans of Swing, Down to the Waterline, Setting Me Up, Lady Rider, Single-Handed Sailor, Solid Rock, One World, and then Money for Nothing. And Money for Nothing is the only one I really know by them from this book. But I also like, you know, it's funny, you know, they did Walk of Life, right? And I used to hate that song as a kid. 
I think probably because I, uh, I think because I just heard it all the time on the radio, but I grew to love, not just like the song, but I love it. My favorite part is like when the song is over, uh, and you just got that, those background vocals, they go, ah, or whatever. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's just an orgasm to my ears. Sorry. I think that's what they call an eargasm. Ooh, man. Yeah. Alright, is this another game? Oh, it is. Hey, wait a minute. This is... Is this... Could this be? Hmm. Could this be for the Famicom? Because it's not like I'm collected for that anymore or anything. Oh. I guess we'll find out. Just trying to open this in a way it's not going to damage the game, but... Alright. So this is Bakusho, I no Gekicho. So uh, Bakusho is kind of like a, it's like a, a, a lot of laughter. I guess you could say it's like the Japanese equivalent to what we say in the U.S. LOL or in the English language anyway. And I is the Japanese word for love, and then Gekicho is like a like a theater or something. So, uh, in fact, it even has a Japanese or an English title at the bottom here, the Dramatic Love Theater. Uh, basically, it's a Game of Life clone, because I don't know why, but uh, the Game of Life was such a thing in, in the U uh, or in Japan at the time. We never got the Game of Life on the NES, but in Japan, they got a bunch of, got a bunch of Game of Life games, except uh, they weren't they weren't 100% based on it, but they were just heavily inspired by it. Uh, so Sea Dream is the publisher, and everyone gets this company, Sea Dream, confused with Color Dreams, but I can assure you it is not the same company at all. Sea Dream was a licensed developer. It even has the Famicom family logo there, the two Fs. Um, that's, the, that's actually the Japanese equivalent of the Nintendo Seal of Quality on the NES games and stuff, so... Um, check out the manual it's a pretty short one too oh I love the precautions for use oh but I wanted to I wanted to show you guys the back though because that's the funniest part there's no screenshots in the of the game it's just like a few drawings and the drawings are pretty good it's just they're pretty funny and stuff and well done it's just I found that funny Usually, when you look on the back of a game box, of course, you see gameplay. Actually, what about the Shogi game? Is that... Oh, yeah, see, there's Shogi. By the way, this guy this guy was born in 2002. It's, like, hard to believe it's been that much time already. This guy's already in his 20s. I'm almost in my 30s. Ooh. Hate getting old. Ugh. Almost done here. No worry, it's almost over. I think I got another CD here. At least that's what it looks like. That's the funny thing. I don't remember every single thing that I got. I remember a good amount of it, but ah oh, yes, yes, this is a great album. Um, and it's one that I already have. Funny enough. Uh, and I know what you're thinking. Well, then why'd you buy it again? And I will explain that. There is a legit reason. The Smithereens 11. So, uh, this copy that I got, um, it has a bon it has two bonus tracks. No, three bonus tracks on it. Okay. Well, that's cool. I didn't know that. Um, or, I mean, I did. Uh, the, the other one I bought doesn't. But this one is a different release. Because the Obi, or the, which is the cardboard thing that goes around the spine, um, that it's different. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I open this. doesn't look like there's a way. Huh. I 
Oh, wait. There we go. Produced by Ed Stasium. Or I wonder if it's Stadium and they misspelled his name. <laughs> Alright. Um, I usually just uh, fold these up and put them inside the case so I don't lose them. Um, now, was it worth buying this one? Uh, yes, it was. Because this one actually has the Japanese lyrics. The other copy that I have does not have them. Uh, Takeda, speaking of Takeda Shingen, I could read that the translator's last name is uh, Takeda. That's funny. Uh. Alright, here's the last one. Here we go. Ah, here's another CD that is video game related. Uh, just gotta be careful about this. You know, it sucks that this guy passed away, but this is a uh, Koichi Sugiyama Melodies of Game Music. It's a t it's a double disc. There's like well, 16 plus 21, I'm not quite awake yet, so I can't uh, quite, you know, <laughs> do the math right now. But uh, it's about, like, what, 40 songs or something? Um, but yeah, it sucks that he passed away a while back, but um, to be fair, he was in his 90s, so it wasn't like, you know, his life was cut short or anything. He, he was around for quite a while. Um... I'm just trying to find out how to get this open. I don't see a way to do it. That is weird. I don't see a way to open this. I'll worry about it later then. <laughs> okay, now the worst part about this is always cleaning up the trash because there's so much of it. Oops, sorry. Yeah, let's throw this shit in the box, I guess. Alright. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, I actually got to get ready for work because it's almost time for me to go. So, with that said, I will see you guys later. God bless and peace out. Have a great one.